What's up, everybody out there in 420 land? This is the co-host of Two Stone Dudes Podcast, Ryan Castle. The Anchor app is where I got my start, and it's been amazing being a podcast host so far because of Anchor. Let me explain. It's the easiest way to make a podcast for free. That's right. It's free. Anchor then distributes your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. And I won't forget about the creation tools that allow you to edit your podcast from your phone or your PC. And you can get paid with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make your very own podcast. Download the free app or go to anchor.fm. So we're going to be talking to, let's say, 100,000 of them or 200,000 of them. Um, And they're processing what we are saying. Right now, there are bacteria in your gut and mind who live in enormous colonies, an enormous bacterial colony. If you had it on the palm of your hand, it would be the size of your hand, but you couldn't see it. Are you you thinking of this while you're saying it? Are you thinking of the vast numbers of people that are listening and watching? Or are you just relaying the information? Like, are are you cognizant? Yeah, both. Both. Because I want, remember, Einstein gave me my marching orders. You have to take complex ideas and simplify them so much that anyone with a high school education and a reasonable degree of intelligence can understand them. And I want to make good radio for your audience. But once you, what what I'm trying to get at is once you have got it established in your head that nothing is isolated, that everything is connected, when you speak, are you aware when you're speaking that everything is connected? I mean, are are you actually consciously thinking of all of these different minds taking into account all these different mind-blowing things that you're saying and then applying them out in the world i think so yeah i mean you know if you hear it coming out of my mouth that's what's churning around in my brain i'm just you're you're such a bright guy i'm just trying to understand if you're in the moment or if you're on my uh, are you ready yep what's up ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the two stone dudes podcast this is your co-host, Ryan Castle, with Rob the Nye. And Kevin. And <laughs> Mondo Homunculero. Yeah! Tonight on the show, we got a great lineup. We got Shit. the local news and some world news from Rob the Nod. Oh. Then I give you some wrestling news, and then we get some commentary, um, both things from everybody. Uh, you guys are going to get a good chance to listen in on the interview that I did with a homeless person, an actual homeless person, and what he goes through on a daily basis and his struggles and what he wants, his, what his message is out there that he wants to get to the world. Um, and, and, and it was, it was, it was kind of hard to do. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was one of the harder interviews I ever had to do. Yeah, but, uh, flashes of it too. and I want to say that we got stood up tonight yeah. and, uh, Whatever, dude. I ain't mad at you. Who's on a date? You know what? It's not even worth mentioning the name. It's really not. We just got stood up and... Uh, <coughs> we had a date? Yeah, we had a date, man. <coughs> so, good for oh, him. Oh, man. You know what, dude? Good for you. Thanks for your help. Appreciate it. Let's move on. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we have for this segment. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Let's get a word from our sponsor. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-host of the Two Stone Dudes podcast, Ryan Castle, I'm talking to you about the Smoking Realtor. Let me tell you about the Smoking Realtor. When you buy or sell a home, the Smoking Realtor will bring over his barbecue pit that is attached to his trailer, and he'll make food for you, your loved ones, and your neighbors, or anyone who happens to be passing by that wants to eat. That's just how Peter Castellucci rolls. He can be reached at 623-208-3577. Once again, that's 623 623- 
three five seven seven for the smoking realtor. Thank you. What? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next segment of the Two Stone Dudes podcast. This is a co-host Ryan Castle. Uh, we're right now. We're going to have the local and a little bit of world news from Rob the Nod. Mr. Nod, what do you got for us today? Oh my goodness! What I got for you right now is I got to say is I have a fabulous uh, <clears throat> vodka and Seven Up right now going. With, with an actual slice of lime. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Nice, nice. It is Friday, but putting that aside, marijuana, the House approves federal marijuana legalization bill. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe myself. I'm fully fucking shocked. The U.S. House representatives approved a bill to federally legalize marijuana. And that starts today. Just kidding. Uh, of course, we got to check on the nook and crannies of the laws and passing because think about it you got a job and you just can't have a job and have a joint so let's see how that goes especially if you need to pay your bills and your baby mama got shit coming on you gotta take care of that too uh do see you know what ask some stuff on that what is going on with Doug do uh, oh my gosh Doocy. <clears throat> so he's getting sued by uh you know what? I, I'm so like baked right now by some by this what this dumbass person that voted for Trump is on Trump's side, and again with the votes, thinking it's it's wrong and it's been rigged and blah blah blah. So he's being sued by that stupid bitch, and uh, it's gonna fly by easy. He, he's not even worried about it. I think it's Kelly well, Ward. Yeah, Kelly Ward. Thank you. A dirty scumbag conservative cunt. And sorry. some apparently, but uh, yeah, oh, this no. this uh, individual is suing Ducey, so he's he's not worried about it. I love burning her ass. I've burned her ass on Twitter. I've burned her ass on Facebook. And if I could get to her live, I got some cayenne for that shit. And that little disco <laughs> burned it at too. Ow! Ow! <laughs> uh, any questions, guys, about the mar- marijuana thing? Huh? Yeah. Ask? Okay. So you're saying it's a? It, they're trying to make it federally legal now? Not trying. It passed. The bill what do you mean passed. it passed? Okay, it's so coming. if it passed, uh-huh. then are we able to smoke up at work? See, that is the next question. Here's yes. the deal. Pass the House. Remember, there's two houses of Congress. Yeah. Right, so it ain't done shit yet. Well, no. it does pass the first hurdle, but that's happened before. But right. I, I'm so, kind of looking at it as for those. I think the Senate's going to go for it because most of those guys own marijuana stock now. Yeah, and it's, 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 yeah, and it's on a rise. But yeah. then at the yeah. same time, we have to keep an eye on that because that can just go to zero. Well, then quick. there's the then there's the third hurdle. What's the third hurdle? Is Biden's got to sign it if he will sign it again? This won't happen until March. Okay, well, just like I know uh, Obama would have. Yeah, he would have because he Cause, smokes weed. Yeah. Okay, Obama. You think? Obama, uh, he did. Oh, I bet. I, he did. I think yeah. every individual dabs a little Obama. bit of CBD. Obama uh, chilled out on the. That makes no goddamn sense. It's casual. Lead. It's all in. Yeah. You know. Get the fuck out of they here. They say it's different. See the yeah, get the fuck out of here. Well, you don't. You're not gonna rub a fucking joint on your leg or a blunt, so right? You're gonna use CBD oil and rub that, that on your on your joints. If marijuana right, gets yeah. taken out of its class one status uh, as a schedule narcotic. one, yep, schedule one status as an narcotic, then you can go and buy leave it to Kevin to know the terminology. Excuse me. What's up? I said, leave it to you, nerds, to know the terminology. Well, <laughs> Schedules one. Well, does that mean Schedules also, one. Can we um, open our own clothing line of marijuana because it You're works a fucking way criminal better than nerd. Well, it's be used stronger for a lot of shit. Yeah, a lot yeah. of different things. But that's so, not marijuana. That's Indian yeah. hemp. Yes, hemp. Yes. Hemp. Not yes. my fault that I get high and watch a lot of fu- fucking criminal shows. You're a criminal nerd. <laughs> So fucking crazy! You, you, you watch you dude. You watch crime or, uh, porn. So you watch the, crime porn. So here's the big deal. Just like on South Park. Wait yeah. a minute, Mondo. Wait, 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 wait. Be on the case files. Wait a second. With this Mondo. motherfucker over here, okay? He watches fucking crime porn. Sure. Trapped in a box. We'll crime porn, we'll Mondo. Porn is well, what, what do you think is better, clown porn or crime porn? Or crime clown porn. How the hell did we what? get into this conversation? Uh, okay, Ryan, so let's go Ryan back. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's Rob, go back. Rob, take us back. Bring us in. Um, I'm just, I'm actually shocked 
And but I'm not talking about actual porn, right? You get that. I know, but you guys are crazy. Like, I'm talking about like CSI. What I'm saying and, is, you know, like, you know, like, you know on the implications Friday fucking... of having marijuana pass the House article. What's the bill actually say? Does it say it decriminalizes it? Does it say it makes it? See, that's the trick. It they are going to decriminalize. Okay. That is is going to that, okay. but of course everything has a stipulation to it. Okay. So depending on the case and what your priors are, um, this is a definite. I would say a friend of ours <laughs> could possibly be out a little bit after January. Yeah. Oh, Adam. Yes. Okay. So this will could actually work in his favor. I might even say his name. We said we did a whole podcast about him. I know. I'm just kind of looking at you, and you're so like I'm baked like a motherfucker. Yes, right you are. You are. I'm bright. baked like a clam. Like a clam session the last in New Jersey. Podcast, like a candy cane, man. You are. Yeah, happy. I know. Dude, I feel fucking fan <laughs> fucking fantastic. And you're wearing a red shirt. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing my Bro Warriors t-shirt. Yeah, dude. yeah, rush. Shout out to my boy Felix, man. That was a big uh, game on Nintendo. It says here that. It has little chance of passing the Senate. Now that's a, a little bill. chance, yeah. Well, we don't know that. No, that's just uh, speculation based on what. That's the just the media is. trying to keep the little man. They're always fucking with you. Always fucking with the little man. Yeah. You know, listen, what I mean? it's gonna go through, right? But then every job that yeah, has just, employees just goes to show to smoke marijuana, uh, it's gonna have to pay a little extra tax. Yeah, you know, it just goes to that's show. What say, yeah. Well, here's what's more, cool. This is what it says: the Moore Act would remove. Marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act and mm-hmm. eliminate criminal penalties for individuals who manufacture, distribute, or possess marijuana. And it also creates a process to remove prior convictions mm-hmm. known as expungement and conduct sentencing review hearings for federal cannabis offenses. That's right. fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah that would That's definitely get him out of jail. Yeah. Yes. Nice. He's golden. Adam's golden. But nice. the big deal is. Now, Happy. you need to go to the pain right, and get narcotics. <laughs> you test positive for cannabis. You can get your fucking narcotics, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, 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 some, some of these corporations <laughs> got, still have a little uh, little uh, strength in that. So. You reckon? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it's going to come out to where they have the right and it's going to be a tax added. You probably won't even barely see it unless you're just straight on point of checking your, your papers. They still have. The federal tax stamp. Because we're being taxed right now for being yeah. a card holder. Well, there's still a federal right. tax right. stamp so for, for cannabis. This will be an additional ad, but it, it may come back at, for us like at the end of the year because we're, we're paying. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you a consensus question here. Sure. Do you really give a fuck? And if you do, why? I don't. But I would. If it's legal or not, yeah. Like, do oh no, I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> oh, no, I mean, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a move. I think it's a good move in the right direction. You know, towards uh, individual liberties and whatnot. You right. know, I mean, that, that's that right. that makes more the most sense. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's good for the people that just want to get high to get high. You know what I mean? And that's that's fine because it's 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 up to them what they want to do with their bodies. Right. You know, I, I think it's. I think it's a. It, I think it's a big strike in the right direction. But at the same time, it's also kind of like the government going, all right, just here, go over there with it, just go over there, <clears throat> here, take this, and go over there, and don't bother anybody else, right. okay? So here, take this, <coughs> go, get the fuck out of the way, don't let anybody see you do this, do this in your own home, right. and right. it's all good and well, right. don't fucking, don't do, don't drive while you're fucking high, don't go out in public and smoke a joint. Yeah, there's going to be rules. So act like an adult, and we'll take care of the rest of this shit. However, you do know that right down the street from this studio right here is a salon where it's legal, if you have a card, to go in and smoke weed. Is that still going, or is it closed I down? I don't know. We have to check it out. Yeah, we got to check that out. A nail salon where you can smoke weed? Oh, absolutely. And you can get, like, your fucking pedicure and get a little massage and... <laughs> You could, you know. Fucking A, man. I don't think you're going to get a happy ending other than just being high and getting, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's like cool that. if you go there and blaze. That'd be fucking bomb to be out in public. We got to find that out. And if we, hey, I, I, let me ask you. If we find that out, how about us going down there with our phones and doing a segment down yeah, there? Yeah, we should totally do what an do episode think? down there. What do you think, fellas? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'd pay for it. Rob's the end. 
I can just see that right now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Sounds like a plan. We could do it. As all a right. Cool beans. Too. All right. Rob, is that all the news you got for us? You know what? As yeah, yeah, because you know what? Everyone already knows. You know, it's I, both sides know. So let's see how it goes. But in my future thought is going to be a tax added to our jobs, depending on how we work. And yeah, it's going to be taken out. Since we're already card what are you holders. talking about? When it comes down to getting some money from oh, us, yeah, of yeah, 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 okay. they're going to still get their money. Right. Well, okay. There could that be, makes sense. You know, there used to be the federal it won't be just marijuana stamp tax act. Right. 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 Which I think is still in effect. I believe it is. It, you, do you know, Kevin? Uh, I think uh, from since 1992. It's been since 92? Mm-hmm. So if they bring that back, then there's a federal <coughs> tax, me. and I think it's for interstate mm-hmm. transport of hemp. Well, hemp is already fully legal down there. Yeah. And the, but then there would be on transport, which is cool. Mm. It's a great way to pave the way. If I can yeah. work on cocaine next. Yeah, everything. <laughs> well, look at Oregon. Man. Look at Oregon. Dude. Yeah, you fucking hell, right, Hey, hey, you know what? If it, if that ever comes back in, in the next in fifty years, I, I believe Nike will, will take over. You can get heroin and fucking yeah. dispensary. Nike and, and, and cocaine together, <laughs> right? Nike. <laughs> All right. You can get okay, boss. You can, get, you can get fucking speed. Ryan, and Oregon, what's good, man? We are so. Uh, I love Fridays. All right, let's take let's take fight. let's take a ten minute break because I'm a real stoned right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in the next segment. Next for a word from our sponsor. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-host of the Two Stone Dudes podcast, Ryan Castle, I'm talking to you about the Smoking Realtor. Let me tell you about the Smoking Realtor. When you buy or sell a home, the Smoking Realtor will bring over his barbecue pit that is attached to his trailer. And I'll make food for you, your loved ones, and your neighbors, or anyone who happens to be passing by that wants to eat. That's just how Peter Castellucci rolls. He can be reached at 623-208-3577. Once again, that's 623-208-3577 for the Smoking Realtor. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next segment of the Two Stone Dudes Podcast. This is the co-host, Ryan Castle. I'm going to get my wrestling report right now. This is Ryan's wrestling report, we'll call it. Um, from Ryan. From the Two yeah. Stone Dudes Wrestling News. How about that? So, Kenny Omega, here's the most important thing going on in wrestling right now. Kenny Omega is the new AEW World Heavyweight Champion. What? Yep, Kenny Omega, who came out of Japan <clears> to <throat> AEW with the Jacksons, and you know he came with, um, you know he came with Cody Rhodes, and and you know he, he became a tag team champion with um, with uh, Adam Page with Hangman Adam Page, and after he lost the championship, I figured what was next for him. Well, it had to be a world championship match because him and John Moxley have had matches in the past, and they were really bloody before. Well, this is just supposed to be a regular match, not a no DQ match, nothing like that. And what had happened was um, some guy who was doing the broadcasting, I forgot what his name was, had a microphone that Moxley went and hit him, and the guy dropped the microphone. Ooh. Well, Kenny Omega grabbed the microphone and hit Moxley in the middle in between the eyes, busted his head open. Damn, were you there? No, I watched the match. <laughs> but I got to do a good memory when it comes to this All shit. All right, yeah, right? keep going. So... Once in the hits him with the one winged angel, one, two, three, gets the championship match. And they run out saying um, that they're going to be on Impact mm-hmm. next Friday. So I was on, I was in the middle of watching Impact when my fucking wife's divorce lawyer called. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, shit, I had to stop hey, watching. I, gonna... I had to stop watching. What the fuck, Mondo? I like it. Good sound effects. Um, I, so I forgot, I forgot to watch Impact. Because I got distracted. But anyway, besides that, Sting made his appearance in AEW. Good old fucking Sting, man. Like, and he's in the he's in the crow sting. He's not like he's oh come on, man. Don't do the fart app. <laughs> Don't do the fart app now. <clears throat> you could have kept it when you were you were supposed to do a Giuliani thing and you didn't do it. This is true, so I just threw in the uh, automatically. Well, you're gonna have to answer in Giuliani. Yes, one. Giuliani. All right. Oh, man, really? 
<laughs> Is that what we've come to? God damn it. I'm too high to protest it. <laughs> so Sting made his AEW <laughs> debut. Mondo's just dropping shit. If it's money, I'm keeping it. So, uh... Anyway, and I got to watch a throwback match between the Motor, the Motor City Machine Guns and the Young Bucks uh, that was on Impact. Um, and that was a great match. Great, great match. I hadn't seen it before, but it was a throwback match. It's just something I haven't caught in the past. And it was just a great all-around technical wrestling match together. Uh, the, the ending, of course, is really spotty, but I definitely enjoyed it. Now, I got to talk about Moxley losing the title. I personally wasn't ready for John Moxley to lose the championship. Why not? Uh, because he's the face of AEW. You know what I mean? Okay. He's he's a, he's a person who, when Vince McMahon asked him to do something unethical, okay, he stood up for himself and said, "No, I won't do that." All right. And then he stopped working for him. So AEW, when they made him the heavyweight champion, that meant something to me. Okay, that's like that's awesome that they gave somebody with such intestinal fortitude and such a sense of morality in himself. Yeah, he decided he quit, and yeah. that's a shoot too. Yeah. That's a total shoot. It's not a work. That's exactly what the fuck happened. I get the, the man respect. stood up for himself. Yes, you know he, what I mean? he did in a, in a proper manner, and uh, and I admire that about him. So when they became when he became the heavyweight champion, that meant a lot to me because that that showed that showed me that like there's still decent people out there. That are deserving and willing to take charge of something, and um, so now I, I'm hoping that he has a rematch and he gets a belt back. And that's as a fan, that's what I'd like to see. As a wrestler, mm-hmm. there's a lot of other things I'd like to see happen. Okay, but as a fan, I'd like to see a rematch <clears throat> where he wins the title back. Um, I, I actually, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the cross between between Impact and AEW. See what that's going to be like, and uh, and that's all I got for my report. So, uh, thank you for listening to the report. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll be back. Oh, check this out. So, what we got for you right now is um, we're going to have the um, the interview with uh, the homeless person. Um, and it was pretty powerful. And I hope you guys can stick through it and listen to it all the way. And listen to the side of the story and what it's like to be on the streets. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you on the outro. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the next episode of Two Stone Dudes Podcast. This is your co-host, Ryan Castle. Rob Knott is absent at the time, but I have a special for everybody today. Um, we have on the show um, a couple who is struggling and who is out on the streets right now. And uh, we're hoping that this show will bring a little bit of awareness to it and uh, we can get a little bit of their story. What's your name? Uh, my name is Drew, but everybody calls me uh, Black Jesus. Nice, nice. Right on, right on. And Miss, what's your name? Um, it's know. Honey. Honey? All right, cool beans. How long have you guys been on the streets for? Um, I've been on the streets since July when I got out of prison. Okay, all right. How long have you been in prison for? Uh, this time, two and a half years. Two and a half years? Wow. Nice stretch. Right yeah. on. Where, where are you at? Um, the last place I was at was in Steiner in Buckeye. Okay. Yeah, we got a couple of buddies doing uh, doing time in Fourth Ave right now. Yeah, They're just starting out, so waiting their sentence. So I get that. Um, this is intriguing to me because I've been homeless before. I was homeless for six months of my senior year in high school. Like I had to spend the last six months of my senior year out and like, bouncing from house to house, sleeping behind buildings, slept in a cardboard box a couple times, fucking ate out of a fucking dumpster, had to work at a restaurant just to get food to eat. So I fucking get it, man. Um, yeah. I don't know what you're going through. I know I'm a fucking addict. Um, so many, in so many senses, I'd fucking use weed to get off of heroin. Fucking worked. So I don't know. Worked. What, yeah. Fucking worked, How man. How the fuck did you pull that off? Dabs. Dabs. Every time what I started. Are you putting these dabs? Like every dabs. time I, every time I started to get that, you know that cramp up. That cramp in your stomach where the, your abs starts to yeah, twitch a little you, bit. You feel like your butthole and your belly button are playing Red Rover with each other. Like. Right, 
Right. Like, I, just, I was about to explain to people, and I feel like people just don't understand. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's how exactly how it feels, and most people don't get that. Most people will never know what it's like to be addicted to heroin, what it's like to wake up dope sick and not have anything to fucking go for. A lot of people will never know what that's like, and good for them, you know? But I feel that people don't have enough empathy for people who are addicted. Like, they, there's not a lot of understanding. I mean, a lot of that comes from the fact that they'll never understand, you know? I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a choice. It's a personal choice that was made for, for uh, I want to say half, for half. Because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that um, a good portion of these, these, these kids and, and young adults and people who are addicted to the harder drugs and narcotics that are popular and, and stuff like that, you know, all honest, honestly started pharmaceutically. Right, you know, right. That's how I started. You, know, out. you can't help that you got hit wrong in football, or you're in a car accident, or you're doing gymnastics and you landed wrong, and just so many different variations of shit that could go wrong. And what happens when you go and you're in pain and you're trying to get this fixed? And you know your your world that you've known and your dreams and your aspirations that you've chased for your whole life, or or just you know the better portion of your life that was productive and progressive, you know, crashes and tumbles. You, they, they give you these drugs and they dope you up to cloud your fucking senses and, and to keep you from acknowledging, you know, the fact that this is part of reality and you have to deal with it the best way that you know how. Instead of them giving you the tools to do that, you know, they'll broadcast and then they'll publicize like, oh yeah, we're here to help. No, no, they're not. Not really, not at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> they could give two fucks about really what's going on. Right. Corporate country, you know? It, it, it's it's us as people at the end of the day that got to make that decision. And it's hard for people to make a decision when they don't have all the facts and they don't understand what it's like to be put in this predicament, you know? And, uh, these, these, these doctors and, and these people, the, they dope you up and they, they give you this to make you subtle for, for the moment. And, you know, before you know it, your body becomes chemically dependent on something that you had no idea was going to affect you the way it did, and you don't know what to do about it. Right. But that feeling that you have or, you know, whatever side effects that are growing from this and the traumatization of, you know, what happened and put you in that position in the first place are going to drive you over the edge no matter what. Right. It, you, you're mentally incapable of being able to just take all of that and process it <clears throat> and not have some kind of help. Now, yeah, it helps when you have the right people around you and, and you're in the right environment and everything like that. Yeah, because it's distracting the mind. You have places to go. You have an escape, you know. But not everybody has that shit. And right. next thing you know, you're fucked. You know, you're you're in my position where you're sitting out here and you're like, damn, you know, it's, it's getting cold outside. I fucking hate the cold. I'm from Florida, <laughs> nigga. Like, I, half naked and wet is my idea of a good time. Nice. I don't want to put on layers of clothes and shit like that. I, if I if I got to deal with that, you know, I'm trying to be indoors. You could be indoors. in the Northeast, and, right? Huh? You could be in the Northeast. I, I mean, yeah. yeah <laughs> it got to be great if you're in Arizona. Me, it doesn't even matter. Right. Cold is cold. If we're getting anything lower than 68 fucking degrees, I'm not liking it, you know? Like, right. I don't want to go outside to smoke a, a, a cigarette. That's, that's just me, though. Right. But right. Fucking, <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's hard, you know, to have to decide yourself if you have what it really takes to not have to deal with this shit, you know? How bad do you not like it? Like I told you, I hate the fucking cold with a passion. Right. I don't have a choice. I'm still out here and dealing with this shit, you know? Right. So I'm doing what, what, what I can do best. And and that's honest. Um, well, I mean, there's not shit that I'm not really that good at, and that's the shitty part. Like, oh, yeah, I have that's potential all. for so much, but... Once you're where I'm at, bro, people don't take the time to remember that I start off as a person, too. You know, I went to school. I had friends. I had all the shit going for me and everything. And just shit happens, dude. You know, you know you ask anybody about me, bro. I'm happy. Go lucky. I just want to have a good time. Yeah, I do fucking drugs, dude. And I smoke and I drink and, you know, I fornicate. And so fucking what? This is America. It's 2020. I have this one life to live. I'm going to have fun. I'm nice. going to do it my way. And I'm going to experience shit so that nobody else can come and try to tell me, like, 
what's going on in life. No, you, you, you can't tell me. Hey, did you know in Jersey like this, that, and ah, uh, you can't tell me shit about Jersey. I've been to Jersey. That's wrong. You from. know, you, you, you can't tell, for real? Yeah. Yeah, my, my aunt stays out in uh, Camden now. Or no, Dude, she, I live right yeah, by Camden. Yeah, she stays out in uh, Trent now. She okay. moved from Camden, though. We were right by Camden I lived right by Camden. Yeah, we, we were like right around the corner wow. from Camden High, bro, where the bridge Small goes over world. to Philly. How old are you? You know, and I'm um, 32 uh, a couple days ago. Oh, my, right My birthday was Happy called birthday, Friday. Man. Right on. Thank you. Right on. Make consider this an early birthday present then again, or a late birthday present. Um, you can get yourself out of this, can't you? I mean, to an extent, yes. To Because I have a feeling uh, you can. It just, it's not as easy as it seems when, you know, you're fucking exhausted and you don't have anywhere, you know, like, it's a daily routine <laughs> for, for me and her. We have to worry about the fact that we're going to be dope sick. <laughs> and that shit sucks, and it hurts, and then you're getting this cold on top of it. Not fun. <coughs> it's not even that we have to remind ourselves to eat. We're just so used to not having it like that, but we still have to fit that in. Or we're going to be malnourished, and, and the dope sickness isn't only going to be worse. We're going to fuck around and pass out and be on the side of the road and pray to God that somebody who cares enough is with you to help you or, or to, you know, fucking take your ass to the hospital or whatever it is that you need. Like... <clears throat> People will look at us crazy as fuck all the time, dog. Like, you'd be surprised how much we're shining or just people immediately make an assumption or, you know, just fucking go too far with, with their accusations of how I ended up in this predicament and and what I'm not doing to get out of it, you know? Like, right. bitch, you don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through now, how I got here, like, what the full circumstances is. Anybody can make it sound easy when they're not in my shoes. Right. Most people in the last two days of this, honestly, this shit is real. Like, and, and there's a lot of people out here dealing with it. This is the crazy part. You know, there's a community of us. Just like... Really? Any, yes, absolutely. We Tell me seriously about have it. a family. We, we have a whole network and a whole system of, of how everything is, is you know done we have rules and regulations and people who are going to make the higher decisions and you know there's a hierarchy everything it, it is seriously a community because it's not just one or two or ten of us out here no there's fucking hundreds of us out here wow everywhere bro the, like there's people living in the fucking bottom of the river give me an example of a not to do ditch. Give, give me an example of a not to do amongst the homeless community okay you know it's, it's just a, i think stealing would be one of them oh absolutely absolutely you know like like, the stealing, um, we're big on respect, you know, like, the, the, depending on the manner of how a situation was approached. Like, one time a kid came in, and, and he was trying to push drugs, and he was flaunting it, and he was feeling himself, and he was talking shit, and he talked shit to the wrong elderly lady. I mean, I, it sucks to say elderly, but honestly, this woman was in her 60s. You know, this is someone's fucking mom. Now, the chick's mom that it was... Was just trying to be nice to the kid, y'all, and help him. Because everybody else is kind of like, bro, why are you even over here? Like, no, nobody over here even knows you. <clears throat> like, you're kind of doing the most right now. I'm bringing the wrong attention. Mm, fuck off. You ain't want to listen. The, the, the mom's girl, uh, I mean daughter, her boyfriend is, uh, like, icon amongst this community of people. Really? And so, immediately, something is going to be, you know done somebody has to say something and let this kid know that he's in a fucking wrong how's a hierarchy <clears throat> um you know it's it's no different than, than anywhere times put in you know uh the decisions made am amongst you know your peers and and the people who have the the bigger influence or you know uh just know more about the environment and 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 the people around the resources and shit like that you know so Okay, me me being the type of person that I don't, I'm not temperamental, I'm not hot-headed, you know, I can assess the situation, I've been through, I got 12 sisters and 7 brothers, I know a lot wow. of shit, you know, I come from a big family and a big home, I'm from the south, the, the southern hospitality and mannerisms, the, our manners, everything is completely different than how it is out here, you know, so I, I'm a sensible person, you know, when, when I see a situation escalating, just from miscommunication, or, you know, something that's a problem, something that's even a potential problem, nine times out of ten, I'm fucking right. 
You know, and I'm like, yeah, see, I told you. And I, I didn't even bother saying it no more. I just look at him like, mm-hmm. right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. So you don't gotta say anything. You know, I, just, I keep pushing. But we know. Like, we know. <laughs> you know, you fucked up, right? Yeah, you know. And you guys um, share? Do you guys share meals and stuff? Absolutely. I mean, well, okay. I mean, yeah, this is my girlfriend, but I can tell you now, she had a hard time dealing with how everything worked out in the end because I have people that I've known for years that we've we've been long before we were even in this situation though I've seen how it started and tumbled and just you know it, it played out for them and I'm like damn and I'm looking at a lot of people you know and some people were looking at me like I never would have thought you'd be in this fucking situation I'm into music bro I was doing fucking shows and I was fucking making all kinds of beats and music for other people I play instruments I sing and I rap and I dance and just I was doing what was my passion in life, and I'm fucking great at it. I was born to do this shit. Yeah, I worked fucking two full-time jobs at the same time. Sometimes I worked three jobs, you know? I have two full-time jobs and a part-time job. Wow. I still come home and, and, and incorporate some kind of music into my day, learn a new song on guitar or, you know, make a new beat, and just, it, it, it was what I was doing. I was loving it. I, I, was, I was having a great time. I, I partied, and, you know, I, I met people, and, I, and I've learned things, and, and shit like that, and all of that can make a fuck at this point, because this is my reality right here, you know, I, 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 I have to take it as it is, but she, she, she's baffled by how everybody, you know, fucks with each other, the people I have known for years, even with them knowing that I'm capable of so much more, and I am the person that I am, they still show some kind of consideration, some kind of love, you know, and definitely they're showing the understanding of the fact that we're out here, you know? So some people are like sisters. I have my best friends. I have the people I don't too much care for, you know? Then I'm like, you know what? I've tried with you, and you're rubbing the inside of my fucking boot all wrong, and I don't have time for that shit. I got enough shit going on right now. I'm trying to figure this out, you know? And um, it definitely helps. Though, you know, to have support, to have someone to go to, that, especially someone who can relate to the circumstances and understands this fucked up situation, you know, and the process of daily routine we got to go t- go through, you know. We're t- trying to keep your clothes clean, uh, changing your clothes throughout the seasons and just, you know, like, it, it's, it's kind of easy because honestly, there's a portion of this life that does become an addiction and it's the carefreeness of not having to worry about, you know, Bills and uh, fucking... Yeah, you know, just the shit that's pressed on us, that's subliminally sold to us in everything, in marketing and advertisement and just everything that we do. Like, they make it like, hey, you have to... Actually, no, at one point in time in life, everybody who was on this fucking planet was just living where they were living and they're eating and just... Yeah, we get it, you know? We, we came up with this fucking system of <clears throat> how to keep us busy. That, that's really all it is at the end of the day. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. You guys are bored. You guys are kind of fucking shit up, so... Um, <laughs> We came up with a great idea, but we're going to give you guys a reason to stay fucking busy. That's what it's pretty much come down to. Yeah. <coughs> but, um, <coughs> it, 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 you know, it eventually dawns on you at some point. I don't know. So I'm not explaining. You just become okay with it. I got a pretty broad audience, okay. and I want to get you some help. How can people get a hold of you? Um, you know, I, I have Facebook and, and Snapchat and shit like anybody else does. Drop sure, your I don't links, man. check it as often because I don't have the means to, you know. I got to deal with trying to charge a phone and, and, and fucking hop on Wi-Fi and everything else. But, yeah, I'm, I'm contactable. Okay, drop some links. Whatever. Okay, How can um, people get a hold of you? So that way they're going to hear this. My Facebook name is Drew Renfro. D-R-E-W. Last name W-R-E-N-F-R-O. You can contact me there. Um... At Juicy07 on Snapchat and Instagram, you know. Uh, my email is, is Juicy07 at gmail.com. And you can, you can hit me at any places, you know. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Cool. So that, that way we can get you some support. Maybe get you off these streets, dude. Because you definitely don't deserve to be here. You know what I mean? You're a good dude. I, I try. You. You're a good dude. I do. I, I'm a pretty good judge of character. And you're a pretty good fucking dude. Thank you. No, I was, I was, I was, I was honestly, honestly shocked when you, like, Camera in the corner, and you're just like, dude, you're good, bro. Like, y'all don't gotta move. <laughs> like, I can just tell in your demeanor and 
how you approach and everything. And it, you know, it struck me. Through. I honestly thought you were coming back and see it's it's a bad habit, dude. Like you just you make the assumption you you base a, a depiction off somebody off of. You, know, you thought I was going to fuck with you, didn't you? Yeah, I, I honestly, you're like, hey, look, okay, you guys got to hurry the fuck up type shit, you know? No. I'm used to that. Used to that. People right, just treat me like shit, like, dog. Right. You know? When you just came back and you're just like, nah, bro, you're good, bro. That's, that's fucking crazy. Make you move from somewhere you're sleeping, like, yeah, you can chill, bro, and, and take a I, breath. I guarantee was, he doesn't know what it's like to sleep on the streets. So... <laughs> At all, dude. That that's probably the type of motherfucker who just needed needed a good ass whooping at some point in time in life and never really got it. So he feels like he's better than everybody. <laughs> he's <'cause>, he's <laughs> dude. He's he's an all right guy. He's an all right guy. And I promise you, he is. He just doesn't have an understanding of what's going on. That's all. Yeah. He he looks at it like you're in the way of us doing our job. Right. And that's all it is. So don't it's, take it personally. It's all right, you know. It, it's, but I'm it's, I'm I'm glad you decided to do this. Thank you so much. No problem. I really dude. appreciate you know, it's, it. Man. It's, it's something that I feel like needs to have a bigger spotlight and a little more awareness, you know? Between COVID-19 and just everyday shit, this shit is, is becoming a pandemic itself. You know, how long before it, it turns into something that was highly unnecessary of just the right attention or consideration or just, you know, second of, of understanding we make? It, they can make drastic assessments, you know, they, they say it's the little things. Yeah. This right now, just the fact that you came back and was like, dude, you don't got to move, changed my whole fucking day. <laughs> Honestly, bro, like, huh. like I'd have to jump up and half asleep, grab everything and make sure I have shit. And I, fuck, I feel like shit, bro, and I'm just like, damn, it's still kind of cold. And I'm like, yeah, look, I got groceries and all kinds of shit right here. I got to hurry up and eat some of this shit for the shit get too fucking hot to fucking eat or whatever it may be, like, you know. I don't have to rush and just, bro, you, like, I, I appreciate the love and just the understanding. You don't know how much of a difference that shit made for me personally. My whole attitude, everything, you know, I'm, I'm good now. I'm good. I, I, I can walk around, I can take a fucking breath, and I don't got to be fucking on the edge. Just looking over my damn shoulder all the time. You know, just, just for helped. your day to start. Oh, yeah, it did. It definitely did. <laughs> I got the munchies like a motherfucker. <laughs> right on, man. All right, well, I got to get back to doing my job. I just want to thank you. I really do. Thank you so much thank for you. doing this. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to this episode, and stay tuned. We, and I think I smoked the whole thing at once. Nice. And we're back. You remember? Stone dudes robbed him. Oh, were you pa- like passed out of my house? Yeah. Oh, you got so high. Oh, my God. Dude, Kevin was so high. It was ridiculous. Kevin was ridiculously story. high. It was the highest I've ever seen him. He took a five minute nap. That's like the old Stevie Wonder song, Too High. Yeah. Too high. <laughs> so, why, all right, guys, comments on the interview. It was good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's it. It was good. Yeah. We have to have a conversation interview. about it. Well, I mean, I've got one. All right. Talk yeah. about it. So I liked it very much. And the dude was being real. He was coming off where he comes from. He was coming off from his vantage point in society. And uh, it's, it's more like a disadvantage point. But uh, I, I enjoyed how candid he was with you and how he got real about everything and what it's like down there, you know, in the battlefield of being homeless and being a homeless vet, you know, something that, you know, we said was just atrocious, should yeah. not be. No. Uh, you know, if anyone, no one should be homeless, but least of all a veteran. Yeah. That's enough out of me. All right. Well, not just that, he's just fresh out of prison, too. Just got yeah. out of prison in July. So, Rob, what do you think of that interview? Uh, from, um, uh, the sound of his voice, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, like he stated, um, it, it's a choice, but at the same time within that choice, there's little hidden agendas, which is a gray area. And that gray area got him hooked. Right. Like I asked him if he could get himself out of this situation and he said yes to a certain extent. To a certain extent to where yeah. what sadly happens is because of the mindset and what it did to the to his mindset, it pulls him back in. I mean, it doesn't help the fact he's a heroin addict. No, 
<laughs> of course, that makes getting it ten out, times getting harder. out of jail, yeah. getting out of prison is programs to sign up. But yeah, we all know how that bullshit works. You put your right. name on a piece of paper, and then you gotta wait a while, and then between that wait a while, you don't know where you're gonna stay. Where you're gonna rest your head? And it I know stretches. Homeless shelters. They don't let you do drugs in the homeless shelters, so most people stay out in the streets because of that. Yeah, and and, and I I still believe there's not enough help out there. No, there's definitely not. There's definitely not enough help out there, and there, oh, man. And then there's the thing about you people know who don't want it. Yeah, I was going to do so much. Some who just it. just don't want it, or they're just too comfortable. They're used to they're living that ways. life, and they they get like uh, used to it. So yeah, but see, like like you said, Ryan, you know, you had your time of that, and you came through. You know, you broke through that. Look at you. You know, you yeah, see, yeah. Um, I believe I had to go to the Marine Corps to not be homeless. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, but you, you, you took a different road, regardless, yeah. right? You fought those demons, and you still are, yeah. right? Yeah. But at the same time, you, you're taking them on now with more confidence than before. Yeah, everyone has to go. My life is way better through that door. So I would say they have to go through that trauma to really open up. Like you gotta go. Like for me, um, personally, I I, I grew up like. In in an untouchable stage because any teenager any teenager would feel that way. So right. you don't want to do this, you want to do that, ah. and then a, a real dramatic trauma has to happen to like, oh man, yeah. okay, I gotta stop and wake up. So for that person individually, he hasn't gone through that yet. Yeah, he doesn't hit the breaking point. No, but when it does, hopefully he he'll get through it. And next thing you know, he's got his apartment. He's got his, his, you know, his his lady with him, his dog, cat, goldfish, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know what kind of shit it takes to get over heroin, though, right? The it takes a lot. The point is to be positive. Like, you, you got to go to a fucking, you got to go to a uh, detox center first. Okay. It's a bitch getting into one of those, number one. Yeah, it's a battle. It's a fucking battle. Yeah, it sucks, dude. And or again, yeah, it around. sucks. But again, you're right. a witness to this. Oh, and and you live through it yourself. Turkey, Just right? And, am I right? Everyone right. has that chance, but... It, it's it's there's that fucked up gray area for everyone. No one's is it's not guaranteed. I mean, right. I kicked from opium once. You know, I'm weeks. wondering if I'm guessing. That's you were sleeping for two weeks, basically, right? Oh no, I was out of my fucking mind. Yeah, you were asleep, and then I got the shits. You, the dragon pushed you to sleep. Well, yeah, I, on a daily basis. But then Ooh. when I cleaned up, it was like kicking any other opium. It was a rough kick, and I kicked completely. But I went back to my alcohol. Everyone has a substitute. Hey, that's what I call that's what I call desert heroin, man. <laughs> right, right. Perfectly bad. Yeah. Well Kevin, deserved her. <laughs> what did you think about the way the guy was talking to me and like his whole mannerisms and like he, he you think he's serious about wanting to get off, or you think he's like wanting to stick around a little more in the streets? I'm not sure, dude. Because you'd have to, I would have to see, see him eye to eye and fucking uh, watch him talk to answer that correctly. He sounds like a junkie on the hustle to me. Is what he sounds. Like. Yeah, he he knows the Eric. He's, 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 he's got. When someone's telling the truth, they. Uh, there's a certain he's comfortable body he language they give you, you he's, know? He's comfortable right. where he is. Right. I mean, so like, when I was homeless, it was like the tragedy of a lifetime. I was 42 yeah. years old. I had been the manager of a good size local advertising company, general manager. I Yeah, I had a, an old lady. I had a nice house to live in. <clears throat> I had two cars. Both the cars died. The old lady says, no, forget it, man. It ain't happening no more. Wow. And the job ended. Wow. Ended. And and then the roommates were like, dude, you can leave. You can leave. Just straight you up like leave. that. Yeah, oh, yeah. I had five years clean. <laughs> and like, <clears throat> yeah. <throat> yeah. And I cried every fucking day, man. It was like, it broke my heart. And, I, wow. and luckily, there were people that I knew. I had good friends. So he could sleep on my couch for a while. You know, and then uh, I had another friend who gave me a place to stay for a month. And then I finally talked my mother and let me come back and tell her, oh, man. And then I moved in with a girl who was an escort. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. From, from speaking nice. about, about the homeless, we're going to do it. You never know what you're going to hear on Two Stone Dudes podcast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. 
Mondo. It's um, been a life, my friend. <laughs> Mondo, I'm looking for. Kevin, you ever been homeless? My future thoughts. Yes, I am. <laughs> what was it? What was your, what was your homeless experience like? What's up? What was your homeless experience like? Uh, jumping from couches. Now, did any of them look like the couch from Mar- uh, Married with Children? Some of them were even worse. Right? Yeah. Like that dark brown and the orange flower? I've laid on that one. Mm. Yeah. A lot of uh, plaid. A lot of plaid couches. Couches. Plaid. Plaid, plaid couches. Plaid couches. Some plaid couches, huh? Mm. Smell of like nice. all kinds mm. of things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I didn't Hello. spend... Hello. I have to... Hello. I have to, I have to, I have to fess up. Shit. I didn't spend that whole six months. Is comfortable in it. So yeah. I didn't spend that whole six months on the street street and bouncing around. So I have to tell you this story. Okay. Cause it's one of my cool stories that I like to talk about. All right. So three months into fucking bouncing from place to place. Um, they had, uh, some homes. I th- it wasn't Ryan homes. It was something that you would see like something homes around here in Arizona. But homes caught your eye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what had happened was it was the model home and a couple of unbuilt homes that the budget went under. Oh, okay? okay. I saw like the like the uh, zoning. They had like the sign yeah. posted with all the court documents on and shit. I'm like reading through all this shit. What it basically read to me was nobody's fucking home. Nobody's gonna be home for a long fucking time. And this is a chance for me to get a fucking place to sleep. Squat, so I fucking went, I kicked in the back fucking door. Was it okay. a finished home? Yeah, it was a there's a model home, so it was fully finished. Had plumbing, oh had electricity, had plumbing, had everything. Had oh my god, dude! The so only thing it didn't have was a TV, and I'll tell you what the fuck happened. Uh, I went to go press the fucking button on the TV, and it fucking toppled over. It was a cardboard cutout. <laughs> I was fucking livid. I was like, right. "Fuck! I have no goddamn right. TV." I guess the lights were off. No, the lights worked. Everything worked. I'm just saying. You just didn't have a TV. How do you not know the TV was a cut? Uh, car is this because I went to go and fucking? This is like the middle of the day. I just went to go fucking look because I didn't want to press a button, dude. Is this it's pre-Netflix? Cardboard. I didn't notice it I first. Think you're so zoned and happy. Yeah, oh, you, I was all coked the real. fuck out. You dude. probably would have. Oh, okay. Because I know you probably would have been into a fake. When album. was this? <laughs> like, uh, 18 or 18? I was 17, 18 years old. Okay, yeah, that's right. way before Netflix. Yeah, no, 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 I didn't have anything. Like you couldn't Netflix on your phone. No, I didn't have a cell phone back then. There was no cell phone. There was nothing. No, there was yeah, nothing back then. And if you had a quarter, you might get to the payphone. Yeah, maybe, pretty maybe, much. Maybe. I made so many cell phone or so many fucking quarter calls when I when I was like calling my dad from the Marine Corps and shit. That was ridiculous. Anyway, so, anyway, so I the, fucking I stayed uh, in this fucking house. Collect? This house became the fucking party house. Came the party house. Like everybody came over to fuck. Okay, Damn. I had this fucking table that was a mirror, right? And it had black wood fucking frame around it, right? <laughs> so what I did was I fucking took black duct tape and I taped it all around the fucking edges of the fucking mirror. So every time we would fucking do shit, nothing would get in the fucking corners. Mm-hmm. And then I would just peel the fucking tape and everything was up against the tape would pile up into the front right there. That and that's my pile of coke right there, pile. baby. This that's called fucking... that's called side pile coke there yeah, right there, baby. Right? Wow. It's like table weed. You know what table yeah. weed is, right? Yeah. Everybody knows what table weed is. Yeah. So hey, my table has the you can pull out the the um <clears throat> the uh should I call it the uh, the side part tiles. Yes, this? thank you. Damn, I can pull out the tiles and it has the the metal framing. So I actually do yeah, my little Q-tip and I go around it and still roll a joint yeah, yeah, after so, I go through yeah. all twelve of them. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Right. Not, now I put a cover. I don't think I've ever been desperate before. like that for weed. Not desperate. It just collects, just like uh, when you um use your um. Because that's got to be like fucking. You no, know, your grinder. Tw- you use the bottom, right? I scraped your key from the bottom of your grinder. I've scraped some about. shit when I needed to smoke. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, dude. Especially oh, yeah. when I'm a scraper. Go store, go I get like a tweaker when I'm scraping shit, bro. I don't think I've ever scraped it right now. My pipe. Since I bought it like back in the early four years ago, so back in the early 70s, all it was was Mexican pot. That's all it was, yeah. Centimilla, there was was, oh no, there was no centimilla, that was just fucking dirt weed. That's all there was. Oh, yeah, it was like 10 bucks a lid. What about peyote? Well, peyote you couldn't get very often, you had to know a Native American. Uh, you really get anyway. So, okay, so it gets down to where you get dry, where you smoke the last couple joints, right. So people are scraping their pipes and their bogs, scraping all this shit and getting this tar. And, and like, 
like I was telling Ryan earlier, you turn on the gas stove, and you take two knives and you get them red hot. You put that fucking goo in there. And yeah. You get that goo. Yeah. 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 We yeah. still oh, do yeah. it today. Oh, big time. Hell yeah. And get stoned like a motherfucker. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> well, days of scrounging for weed and it would go dry. Like, it always would go dry around this time of year, too. We used to pack them up, crack them open, or put them in the freezer, crack them open, yeah. add some honey, and throw everything else in there like it's making a, a topping of a pizza. He would have a smoke. But you know, that's what I'm glad to be where I'm at. So we were talking about the homeless guy. Yes, we were. God damn it. And ah. uh, we would agree. Well, I'm done talking that, about him, though. Yeah, we are done. I'm saying he, he spoke his piece. He said his word. But that's after good. a while, it did kind of drag because it was whatever, whatever. And that's because, again, I say it every podcast or in every interview, greed is involved in this shit. Greed? Everyone's fucking greedy. You mean greedy with the, hey, it's about me. Yes. Yes. That's why. That's why we have the homeless. So we, we have the we have that's the why prevalence this addiction of narcissism. Greed. Yeah, narcissism. Yeah. We just, la- we, yeah. we lavish in greed. Some of it, some stronger than others, but we all do. You want to see how selfish people are? Take a drive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? I oh, lose yeah. my mind in traffic, though. Uh, you know? I'm off. Man, I can't you know, the that. best. Remember, though? I'm now, a defensive driver. I don't know if you guys remember this. There used to be these commercials that the National Safety Council would put out, right? Mm-hmm. And it would say, look out for the other guy. It would be like, if but dude, who's the other guy? That's the guy who's fucking up in front mm-hmm. of you. You just keep backing off. And if you find an alternate route, because you That's where libertarians to... come in. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. That is us. <laughs> right on. So is driving a right or a privilege? Privilege. Privilege. Yeah, it's a privilege. Why do people think it's a right? Because they're fucking dumb. Uh, maybe they're reading it wrong. You think they're lawless? Yes. For the most part. And... Anyway, that's enough. <laughs> All right. Again, it goes Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Two Stone Dudes podcast. This is Ryan Castle, the co host, with Rob the Nut. And, Kelly. and <laughs> saying thank you and enjoy your weekend, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was a Kevin. I love it. Oh, didn't stop it. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-host of the Two Stone Dudes podcast, Ryan Castle, talking to you about the smoking realtor. Let me tell you about the smoking realtor. When you buy or sell a home, the smoking realtor will bring over his barbecue pit that is attached to his trailer, and he'll make food for you, your loved ones, and your neighbors, or anyone who happens to be passing by that wants to eat. That's just how Peter Castellucci rolls. He can be reached at 623-208-3577. Once again, that's 623 623- 208-3577 for the smoking realtor. Thank you.